<laughs> Clint, I don't gosh. know how to do that. Thank you, Lynn. Wow. wow. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to do the fancy Zoom stuff. So, so thanks, Lynn, and mm -hmm. uh, thanks, thanks, Janie, for the uh, the meditation and the music, Lynn. And uh, yeah, um, I am kind of a guy who's a. Uh, uh, straddles a, a, a number of worlds and uh, the uh, the discovery of the music brought me into this space where I could uh, where I could be present with just the sound and not be such a headspace kind of guy um, but this evening is um, uh, a little bit of a journey uh, from kind of from where I started and where I started is very much in line with with the meditation this is a um, this is a a Native American flute. Many people here are familiar with these instruments, but uh, just for those who aren't, uh, th this is one by Colin Peterson, and it's uh, made of cedar. And it's uh, contemporary in the sense that it was made since about 1980. Uh, flutes made since then all have a, a kind of a, a similar approach because that's when this instrument became in the forefront of, uh, of New Age music. It was, uh, uh, R. Carlos Nakai is credited with bringing this instrument and identifying it as, as a great <laughs> instrument for, uh, for New Age. So I'll just, uh, I'll just play this. often will hear these days and because you hear this so much um, uh, in this meditative uh, new age style um, a lot of people have begun to think that that was the way they were traditionally played and in fact mostly what we know of how they were played before the 1980s and played by uh, by Indians um, played by what we call Native Americans now um, that style really wasn't played in a meditative way. Now, yes, there were, uh, there were courting flutes, there were cultures that used this instrument as a courting flute, but mostly they were played in a, in a very different style. And we have a lot of recordings of this style. What I've got here is a, this is a gnarly flute from way back when. This is 1892, um, Southern um, Lakota culture. And uh, it's got, uh, well, it's made of cedar. It's got uh, boot polish as a finish. It's got this uh, gnarly uh, animal internals of some kind <laughs> binding it. And they're original. The only thing that's not original is this, um, is this tie here. And um, so I'm going to use this flute. Um, it's got it, it's it's historically inter interesting because it's um, it's got a scale that we didn't. It's the only example of a flute that has this particular scale, which is very close to the uh, uh, the modern uh, uh, scale we now use, pentatonic minor. So, um, but the, the the music I'm going to play is uh, actually from a different culture. It's from um, Kiowa culture. Uh, this style of playing is from Bilo Kozad in the 1940s, uh, 1950s. And uh, it's uh, very different from the meditative style. Um, Coyote, Coyote Oldman calls this uh, the, um, the, the rock and roll music on the Great Plains of North America. So uh, this is a Bilo Kozad uh, Kiowa style.
So that's, uh, that's the sound what you might have heard on um, especially Southern Plains kind of uh, 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 music uh, at, at powwows and uh, at, uh, at gatherings, at drum gatherings. So that's the kind of sound that, you know, I would, uh, uh, Vera and I do workshops. We do Native American flute workshops. We do performances. Uh, before COVID, we were going uh, all around the world to do these. Uh, we have some people here tonight who were uh, at a workshop in, uh, uh, in Wellington in uh, New Zealand. And uh, so I would take some of these instruments with me. And these are uh, one of a kind. They're irreplaceable. Um, this one is historically significant. And putting these instruments at risk was a real issue. You know, take it out on the plane. But I wanted to share these sounds. So about a year ago, I got, <clears throat> and this is the journey into the headspace side. Uh, about a year ago, I got, um, uh, the idea of recording the sounds of that flute and uh, <clears throat> uh, other historically significant flutes and setting myself up so I could uh, play them. I could take just the sounds with me and play them without putting the flutes at risk. And there's a technology to do that. There are sound samplers and sample libraries. So I started recording uh, the sounds of this flute into a sample library. And the way it works is you record each of the sounds of each note in lots of different uh, velocities and lots of different um, volumes. And you put that all into a sound sampler on a laptop. I have a laptop over on my right and uh, it's got the sample library of this. And um, so far we've done nine of these instruments. Uh, and these are available for free download. I'll, I'll put uh, some links uh, later and you can you could go and download the sounds of this instrument and play it. Now, how do you play it? Most people are going to play it with a keyboard. Most uh, sound libraries have um, people are going to play them with an electronic keyboard. I play them with this electronic wind instrument. This is uh, an instrument. I'll talk a little bit about this uh, later. But basically, it's, uh, it is made of plastic on the outside. It's crammed full of electronics. And it tells the laptop the sound to make. So I'm going to play the sound of that flute on this instrument. And it sounds like... the sound of that flute, the individual notes I recorded being played back in real time by the sampler. Now let me show you what I've got on the right here. Um, to my right is this rig and uh, I've got a laptop. Laptop's making the sound and this guy over here um, allows me to select different sounds uh, from, the, from the laptop. And um, I've also got down here a looper. Some people may be familiar with this. This is a looper, and uh, that'll come into play in a little bit. But first of all, I'm going to switch to one of the other uh, sound samples that I have from the flutes. Now, one of the things about this instrument I recorded is it's got a very limited range. Native American flutes, and this is a challenge for players, Native American flutes have about a little bit more than an octave range. So if I play that instrument, At some point, there it was, I played a note and the note doesn't exist 
because it doesn't exist on the original instrument. And if I go down, I go one more note lower, then that note does not exist on the original instrument because that sound library was intended to be authentic to that instrument. But a lot of Native American flute players want to play with an extended range. So what I did was I have sound libraries, some of the sound libraries of the nine that are currently available, uh, have multiple flutes recorded in them to give, you know, a low, I used a low flute, a mid-range flute, and a high flute, and I've actually extended the range um, of the instrument well beyond the range of Native American flutes. I'm going to switch to a new sound sample, a sample library, and this is a sample library of several relatively traditional sounding instruments, not like the meditative instrument I played in the beginning. Uh, and this has a greatly extended range and uh, to the point of absurdity. So. <laughs> hear the sounds that loud. Is that coming through for people? People are nodding their head. Good. That's great. I could actually take it as low as a, uh, as low as a cat's purr and it's barely audible, but that's the kind of thing. And it, it those are well beyond the actual range of, uh, of uh, real Native American flutes. But that was, that was the main project that I originally set out to do. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been proceeding with that, and that's been, that's been valuable. Um, but, of course, what happened was when I got into this world, I discovered this huge world of sounds that are available, uh, uh, of real instruments and uh, instruments that don't exist in the real world, that are just exist in the virtual world. And uh, with the addition of a looper, um, it solved the, the, the pandemic problem because... I'm not, I'm not able to play with my friends, right? I mean, many of my friends here tonight, many fr fr uh, people who've been to workshops, uh, Ron, I know Ron is out there, um, can't, uh, uh, not playing with my friends, not uh, able to do performances, and really needed to be able to do performances, um, especially for, you know, people trained in, in Western music and people who are used to very complex music. Playing solo flute isn't, uh, you know, it's great for a song, but it's not ideal for an entire performance. So this gave me the ability to layer uh, various sounds and basically perform, uh, you know, do a solo show, which we've been doing uh, over the last couple of weeks. We did, a, we did several shows. What I'm going to do is bring up um, another sound. Uh, and uh, everything I'm doing is played on this instrument. So this is... What I've done is loop that. You see this looper over here. Let me, well, I, can, I can put that on full view, a little bit bigger. Um, we can, uh, so I've run this as a loop and I've got that playing now. And I can now switch to another sound. I'm gonna use the pad over here and switch to kind of a, um, a, a tricked out bonsuri. Uh, let's see, where are we with that? There we are. <laughs> That's not actually coming out of the laptop. It's coming out of this um, hardware unit. I have two hardware units here and here. We'll call this the green guy and we'll call this the blue guy. It's now being produced out of here. These are both sound modules that are tied into the system. And um, I can also use my looper. I've got five loops available and I can, um, 
I'll just loop a loop a drone. Uh, right, so. <laughs> switch to another instrument. This is off the blue box over here, a cello. gonna bring up uh, just well let's go back to the flute we had French horn. Uh, it's an emulation of a French horn. instrument called Respiro, which is a, not, not a real world instrument. Somebody I know in Italy produced this um, sound sample of an Armenian Duduk. This is Gino Cementi's Ar Armenian Duduk. sound kind of uh, from a completely different genre <laughs> not really appropriate for this uh, for this genre of music but give you an example of what can be done so um, I can actually, by the way, this is this is a great looper because I can run five loops and I can control the loops individually in volume. So I can bring down certain loops that I want to readjust. And so I'm going to bring down everything. Actually, I'm going to leave the chimes going. How about leave the chimes going? And I'd like to open it up to people. I'm going to come back here. Back. 
and open it up to questions and um, anything anybody has for questions. Oh, uh, first of all, I'm going to put them in. Um, I'm going to put some information in in the chat. Uh, this is a link to this instrument, which is uh, the Silphio. It's made by a French company called Audio, A-O-D-Y-O, and uh, it's made um, uh, a lot of, they're, they're kind of made by hand at this point. There aren't that many of them being produced. And uh, there's also a flute cast on electronic wind instruments I have. Uh, and uh, also, if you want, if you're interested and have a sampler of any kind, uh, the sound libraries are available on Flutipedia. That's a link to the particular page on Flutipedia. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a link to uh, the music that we put out. Uh, and so I'd like to um, uh, open it up for questions. Anybody just unmute yourself, ask a question, or you can put it in, in chat. Uh, everybody's dying to know certain things. Hey, Clint. Yeah. It's hey, is it possible to have another person join in on the Zoom and you record a loop or that would and with the music? That can be set up. Um, <laughs> that's not something I could do right here. That would take a bit of work. Um, but that's the kind of thing that would be possible. Um, what we did at our last workshop uh, um, two weeks ago, uh, we had an evening where um, I was basically doing duets with people, and I used the looper as they were playing to, do, to loop them during these duets. And so there were bits of their own playing coming back at them, including like the last person who played. As people switched, I was, ha I was uh, basically using the looper to bring in other people who had just played. And so we were doing like a trio and a quartet, even though there were two of us playing. So that works. And I think this, this could be set up like this. Yep. yep. Uh, another possibility is um, you can come into this rig uh, how does this instrument talk to the rig? It's a language called MIDI. It's a, uh, a set of information that goes to the laptop that, that reports everything I'm doing with my fingers. Which fingers are down, how much they're down, how much my breath pressure is 500 times a second. It's reporting how much breath pressure I'm producing. Um, and uh, including whether I shake the instrument, whether I raise it or rotate it or turn it. I can modify the sound based on how I hold the instrument. All that information is going to the laptop to have it render my sound. I can take somebody else's input. If I have a keyboardist, I just plug them right in and I can render their sound as a grand piano or any other instrument I want. So that's another possibility to run. We could have multiple people sending me the MIDI and then it would go out as a single sound source going out. This is very complicated, <laughs> but, uh, but this is possible. Yeah, this should be looked into. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Since, since yeah. I'm wondering how you, how you happen to choose the Selfio among other uh, Iwis out there. I've, I'm interested in the Iwi solo, but I wonder why you chose the Selfio. Yeah, and uh, uh, we've used the term, uh, uh, Charles has used the term uh, Iwi, electronic wind instrument, and uh, that means two things. One, it's the general class of instruments, uh, electronic wind instruments, but it's also a particular uh, 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 instrument that is produced by, who produces the Iwi itself? Uh, it's produced by Akai. Akai, okay, Akai okay. Iwi. Yeah, and so... Um, I, I got into this uh, without knowing an awful lot about it, to be honest. My first idea was uh, to do this, and I needed an electronic wind instrument. And quickly, the first thing was uh, many of the instruments have keys on them. They have metal keys that you actuate, which feel and look like a, uh, uh, like a saxophone or a silver flute or a clarinet or an oboe. And people who are comfortable with those instruments are comfortable with keys. And the keys kind of clack up and down. And it's very different from this, which doesn't have any moving parts, but it, uh, it picks up 
as I move my finger off it, it, pick, it, it it's much closer to an open hold instrument like a Native American flute. So that's why I chose this. Yeah. And it's also very recently designed. I think it was designed uh, in 2015, 2016. Uh, it also, one key feature, it has a radio link. It talks on a radio interface. Let me bring down the chimes. <laughs> There we go. Um, it talks on a radio interface to the rest of the system over here. So um, I don't have to have a wire coming out of it. You can get started with these instruments. Um, of course, this is a very complex setup I've got here. Uh, this is, this is the, the traveling into Clint's brain <laughs> and putting some of that uh, experience to use. Um, but you can get started with an instrument called a warble, W-A-R-B-L which is, I think, $250, and plug it into your um, iPad. And that's all you need. Uh, it's a great way to get started. And I'll put the name there, W-A-R-B-L. I have a question about the Sophia. Yeah. So it, it is not actually producing sound. It is electronically or by radio frequency communicating with the laptop, and the laptop has the stored sounds. Is that right? That's the way I'm doing it. Your, uh, the uh, interaction of your fingers on the instrument. That's, that is the way I'm doing it. Okay. However, the instrument, uh, as of about three years ago, uh, they, there was a period when that's all this instrument did. It would just transmit the MIDI, the information, to the laptop. But then after, I think it was produced uh, probably for about two years, they uh, put sounds into it. And so there is a headphone jack on here, and I've done this. Uh, uh, we, we went across Europe for five weeks, and I took this instrument with me and plugged my headphone in and played away. And I'm sitting on trains going across Europe. And so it produces sounds uh, that are just a, an eighth-inch connector right into your headphones or into any other sound system. Or um, you can have the actual receiver produce those same sounds. It's about 30 sounds. Uh, and they're, they're kind of synthesized sounding. Uh, it's a great way to practice. And you might find those sounds useful, but I have now thousands of sounds uh, on the laptop and on these external uh, sound modules. And I'm just loving this world. I've been living in this world for the last year, and it's been really, really uh, rewarding and enriching. Well, the, if you have a headphone jack, that means only you are hearing it right. on your headphones. Right, yeah. But you could do headphone jack right into your system, or you could use the little receiver and go right into your system and hear those sounds that are from the instrument or from the receiver. That's an option. Uh, and it's great for practice. Yep. So, other, I'm um, looking at uh, that, that uh, uh, hard way to control, oops. The uh, format of the sound files, um, yes, I'm using a lot of VSTs. Many of the things that are on the laptop over here uh, are, are things called VSTs, they're plugins, and uh, there's a ton of free ones out there. There's some, uh, some of the ones you heard tonight are, are free. The French horn is a, is a free emulation of a French horn. So there's uh, an entire world of, of virtual uh, instruments, uh, VSTs, that plug into uh, your laptop, basically. a more beginner class about recording sometimes. Um, one of the things uh, I've recently come across uh, for recording in particular is a, um, a service online called Soundtrap, S-O-U-N-D-T-R-A-P. Uh, it's, a, it's a collaborative environment for doing mixing. Uh, we're used to having um, systems uh, on our uh, PC or on our, um, uh, on our Apple uh, that do mixing locally, like Audacity or um, Pro Tools or uh, GarageBand. Well, this is the web-based version of it. You can record directly onto the website, and other people can record onto the website. You can invite other people to join you in a song, and uh, it's an entire mixing application with moving tracks and uh, modifying and adding reverb. And uh, the great thing about Soundtrap is uh, there's a lot of help out there, um, because it is interactive, and you can invite your friends to add their sounds. And it doesn't have to be done. You don't all have to be there at the same time. You can just invite somebody, and they can come at 2 in the morning and add their... You know, I've, I've been doing this for uh, a couple of weeks now. And so I would recommend taking a look at Soundtrap if you want to get into, um, uh, into recording, because it's a fairly simple application, and uh, yeah, I think it translates well back into doing your own mixing uh, on your own system. You learn how to do it. 
So the Looper is a, an, a Boss RC505. Um, and uh, I like it because it's got, uh, it's tabletop for one, it's not a floor looper, so I'm not trying to use my feet. Uh, and, um, you know, guitarists are often standing up and, and using a floor looper. But this is a tabletop looper, and it's got uh, the choice of, of five loops, and uh, allows me a lot of control after the fact, so I can balance those loops out in volume. Um, yes, you can absolutely record uh, shruti box chords and play them. Um, uh, Soundtrap, yep, there it is. And uh, so, what is a uh, soundtrap? There it is. Very good. Um, so, other questions? Just, just unmute, ask. Um, uh, yeah, anybody have a question? Uh, people are typing. Clint, do you ever sleep? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> We, we we get absorbed in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's really uh, it, it's kind it's kind of uh, consumed a lot of uh, a lot of my energy and a lot of my time, and I just just loving it. It's really uh, it's really great, especially in the pandemic uh, in the pandemic situation. So it's gone beyond just recording those those uh, sample libraries. I would um, like to thank you for sharing all this wonderful information with us. It's uh, sure. been fascinating. <laughs> uh, it's our pleasure. Yeah. A boss, boss RC505. Yep. Um, the uh, just to give a rig rundown here, I can I can name some of the. Uh, I'll do the full screen version of the rig. By the way, this is the hookup diagram. <laughs> just to give you an idea of how complex it is, this is what I use uh, during set. It takes me about half an hour to set this up. Um, because I carry it in like a carry-on case and I have to wire it up. The wires are all labeled, but in case I forget or in case a label comes off, this tells me how to wire it up. Uh, however, this is way more complex than you need. I will go back to the uh, full rig setup. Um, as I said, all you need is one of these um, uh, controllers, one of these wind controllers like the Warble, and uh, just a wire into your... Um, into your iPad. Uh, I think you can even put it into your cell phone or certainly into your computer. Uh, and that's all you need. Uh, this here is a um, Yamaha VL70M, uh, which is a sound module made in 1976. It's quite old, but uh, it uh, produces wonderful sounds. And this is an Espresso, uh, Espresso from uh, Germany. And it's the, that was the cello sound you heard. And it's got lots of... Uh, uh, it's lots of great sounds. I'm going to put those two uh, in chat. You can do loopers on um, on a PC. Uh, you can do software loopers on a PC, so that's uh, certainly another option. There's a lot of them. And honestly, uh, the easiest way to get started with loopers, we do have a, a number of videos out there, a flute cast, we call them, uh, YouTube videos. Uh, we have several on looping, and the most recent one is called Loop the Forest. I'll write, that, I'll write that in chat. Loop the Forest is a, a great video on very simple looping with an inexpensive looper and, um, uh, and a very easy technique for it. You don't need to uh, do any timing with it. So Loop the Forest. Loop the Forest is the, is the video on that looper. Uh, other questions? Other ideas? It's 8 o'clock. I don't want to overstep our time here. Yep, Loop the Forest is great for newbies getting started. Um, so, Lynn, how are we doing on, on time? Okay, hello there. Wow, uh, Clint, uh, <laughs> you're amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so now, yes, you all have a, a glimpse of <laughs> just that's just a little glimpse of the complexity of the way this man thinks i'm so respect his brain plus he's got the heart he has really um he's got he's got both both of these things going uh i want to thank uh also my uh cousin janie for her meditation and uh i do this once a month this I call it Spirit Arts Salon, and if you'd like to come back, I'm going to write 
so if I can, I'm going to write my website here, and then you can, um, you know, say, oh, I'd like to be on, I'd like to come back. Uh, I, I uh, feature different artists every month. But I am so excited to see uh, some familiar faces from from Flute Haven and um, from Music for People and then some of my old friends. And I'm so excited about, you know, this group of from all over the world.